Beautiful dogs at work. We train them, we treasure them, and almost everyone in the shooting community knows someone who has had them stolen. What can you do? We talk to the founder of a voluntary organisation that recovers lost dogs. Jane Hayes says that this year it is happening more than ever. She has good advice on security for anyone who owns a dog. Unfortunately, we're seeing a rise in dog theft at the moment, and mostly working dogs, especially Cocker Spaniels. Well, basically, we've got a trained dog, and at the moment, field sports is getting very popular. I'm getting a lot of people taking up shooting. Now, they don't mind paying £5,000 on a gun, and they're going to pay the same on a good gun dog, but they don't have time to train it. So they're buying them on performance and not questioning where these dogs have come from. So we've had several dogs being stolen actually on shoots when they leave them in the car, maybe to rest one when they're taking another dog out. Uh, are people aware, you know, you're going to have, a shoot is going to have trained gun dogs. That's what they want, trained gun dogs, because that's what they get a lot of money for. People are leaving their dogs outside in kennels and they're building the kennels to keep the dogs in instead of trying to keep the thieves out. Some of them just use chicken wire and that's so easy to cut through. And also, some of them have got some really good cages, but they're putting the bolts on from the outside or on the inside. Um, you've got to check your locks as well, because if there's anything showing at all, you know, the cutters will go straight through them. And these people are coming prepared. They know you've got dogs in there and they want them because it means money to them. Every week we're getting between 30 and 40 a day. Not all of them will be stolen, but it does make you question if they don't turn up where they are, if they're chipped, tagged. So they might not have been a witness to be stolen, but again, even if a dog wanders off and you pick it up, that's theft by finding, it's property, you can't keep it. But the police aren't pushing that aspect because I suppose they've got enough as it is without you know, adequate sentencing for the ones that they have witnessed crimes. Um, and quite often, a, th a thief will just say, oh, it walked up to me, officer. We've, had, we've managed to get a lot of cases to court and I think we only ever had one custodial sentence, just one, and that was years ago. And I think that was because they put something else onto it as well, like violence with it. A theft of the dog is being treated the same as a theft of a mobile phone. In other words, slap wrist, don't do it again. Maybe a fine, maybe some community service. And this is not good enough because what it's doing to people whose dogs have been stolen is part of their family. The distress should be part of this. It's like kidnapping a child to them. It's not going to stop. People are going to keep doing it because it's spread round. It's an easy way to make money. Even if you get caught red-handed, hey, hey, don't worry. You just walk away. We are trying to change that. We've, um, we're part of SAMPA, Stolen Missing Pets Alliance. And just last week, we were up in Parliament for a debate after we raised 100,000 signatures to actually get the sentencing toughened up and make it a crime in its own right that has to be dealt with and punishment should fit the crime, which it isn't at the moment. And that's the only way this is going to stop, if you start getting some high-profile cases of people going to prison. And prisoners don't like dog thieves. We had a lot of spate recently of um, dogs being stolen from North Wales. Um, working dogs of all types, you know, Border Collies, the Cocker Spaniels, Sheep Dogs. Um, then all of a sudden they were all dumped. Uh, of course, they didn't realise they only had instructions in Welsh, <laughs> you know. No good to an English person, a dog only reacts to Welsh. Dog Lost is a free service. We've got over 122,000 volunteers that will give up their time and help people with missing dogs. We've also got coming up to now 100 regional and local coordinators who leap into action in their area. They put a specific list out in an email to owners of all the places they should be contacting in their area and there's usually quite a lot that people have never thought of or have never heard of. Um, they also coordinate searches, give advice, ring the people up. They become their sort of like support buddy for that time. And we're building more and more now up across the country, working with other organisations as well. Uh, we get a great success rate. I mean, we've probably got 50,000 dogs on there still outstanding. We've had uh, helped 80,000 get back though. That's one of the perks, yep, that sometimes you can, you get that phone call and you check the photos, you check the dates and you think, yep, definite match. Only if we're 100% then do we phone the owner. And I remember doing one on Christmas Eve and there was a man I've been talking to for years. Uh, and you get to know quite a few people because, you know, they ring regularly when he news. 
And I was able to say, look, sit down, but what was the best thing you liked for Christmas? But no, 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 but yeah, 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 no, yeah, oh my God, I just burst into tears, you know. Yeah. A lot of people just say, wow, it gives you the faith back in human nature. This is how the internet should be working. You don't just call Dog Lost when a dog is missing. Get in touch if you have information about a dog that may have been stolen. We covered this story in 2011. The good news is that, at last, the government is looking to make stealing dogs a criminal offence with penalties of years in jail. In the meantime, we have doglost.co.uk and its team of volunteers.